quickly! I found an open door. The W07's inside. Let's go, let's go! Ah! Toto's coming! Happy New Year and welcome back to the studio show. I am in the brand new Silver Arrows Lounge at the factory in Brackley. It's the team's brand new entertaining and meeting facility. And I am going to do a tour of the lounge later on this season. So keep an eye on the channel for that. On today's studio show though, I'm here at the factory to try and catch a glimpse of the W07. That is the team's new car for 2016. I'm also going to find out how different a wind tunnel model of the car is to the real thing. I'm talking tires and tire regulation for 2016 and if you've been away over the winter break don't worry I have got a roundup of all the news from the world of F1 let's get on with the show so it's a new year and that means we are getting closer to a new F1 season and fans like you and me will be waiting for the season to kick off but here at the factory in Brackley it's a hive of activity Paddy Lowe executive director technical I have never seen the race bays this busy what is everybody up to well, it's one of those months where we uh, regroup and uh, get ready for the new car. So lots of different things going on in different parts of the factory. It depends who you are. If you're in the drawing office, you're absolutely flat out. Many of those guys are working, you know, 16 hours a day, drawing, desperately trying to get those drawings out to the dates that have been set. Uh, meanwhile, the guys in production are busy trying to make the pieces just in time for the, the final delivery when we put the car together to uh, go to the track. So, so that's in, in design and production. And then down in the race area, uh, this is almost like their, their off season, uh, where all the kit is replenished, refreshed, serviced. That one month in the year where you can do all those things that you never have time for during the season. So a bit of a spring clean going on here in the exactly. race bay. Would yeah. you say it is the busiest time for the factory as a whole though? Absolutely, yes. Uh, January, February, are. Uh, notorious in Formula One, you come back from your uh, Christmas holiday, stick your head down and get on with it and hope you pop up to get some air in March. There haven't been that many rules, can you sort of explain what has changed and how the team's having to adapt? Yeah, there are not that many changes but uh, some of them are quite significant. The, the first one concerns safety, so if we look at the car here, uh, we have the driver's headrest, side headrest and this area here is called the the side protection area. That's been raised by 20 millimetres, so about the length of your thumb. But also, more significantly, the, the load test which is applied, which makes sure we build it to a certain strength, has been increased from 15 to 50 kilonewtons. So imagine that, 15 to 50, very significant that is increase. Huge. So that's five tonnes of load put in at a place here sideways uh, that the chassis has got to take and that, that's all intended to significantly increase the protection for the driver should major uh, pieces of debris including whole cars arrive at this point uh, he has that much more protection and has the team found that easy to adapt to or has that taken some serious development throughout last season as well uh, it's, it's been a big job for the people concerned with designing the chassis itself um, that's a very significant load increase um, it's a matter really of how do you do it with the minimum intrusion to weight or aerodynamic surface. So as always, everything's possible. It's just how do you do it in the best way for the best lap time. The other big change that people will notice is the uh, exhaust. So uh, in, in the last two years, we've had a situation where the, the main exhaust goes through one tailpipe. Uh, we have a thing called a wastegate which is a way of spilling out extra pressure from the exhaust system when it's not wanted uh, to be used by the turbo. We now have to duct that air separately through an extra tailpipe um, and this is all intended to make more noise. Um, we're getting louder again in yes, F1 everybody. So, so we're trying to make the engine louder. It will work. Um, we'll see how much louder they'll be. Um, but some measurements have been made in labs and, and seen some significant increase. And the reason for that is the wastegate was causing a sort of silencing of the main exhaust pipe. So by removing it from the main exhaust pipe, we have less silencing going on of the main flow. Paddy, I wanted to ask you, where's the W07? Oh, you won't see it yet. Even I haven't seen it. Um, you haven't? This is the, thing, this is the, the miracle of, of a Formula One team in January and February is that uh, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. And then 
it suddenly a about car. Two days of car <laughs> starts to arrive. Because if you imagine, as I said earlier, designers are designing bits, the production people are making them. It's all, all in a huge plan uh, where the longest bits you start earlier, the shortest bits you start later, but they all arrive at the same time. Well, that's what we uh, hope is going to happen. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to keep on hunting because I want a sneaky peek at this W07, even well, if it might, is in different parts. You might see some pieces. The chassis, obviously, is okay. the biggest part. We can keep it just will, between you and me. We don't one. tell Toto. Okay. Thank you so much, Paddy. Can you believe it's almost two months since the end of the 2015 F1 season and things have already started to change? We've got new competitors on the F1 grid. So Lotus has been bought by Renault and that will see Pastor Maldonado joined by rookie Jolien Palmer. And we've got an all new team, Haas Racing. Romain Grosjean has left Lotus and moved to Haas and he'll be joined by Esteban Gutierrez. I have more news for you from the world of F1 later on in the show. Size matters, especially in Formula One. Every gram counts, so the teams and drivers need to make sure they have the perfect setup before they get to the track. How do they do it? I am joined by Head of Aerodynamics, Mike Elliott, to talk us through what's going on here in reception, because I'm told these two cars are the same, the W05. So this is the full-scale car that Lewis won the World Championship in, and behind us we've got the 60% scale model which we used to develop that car in the wind tunnel? Yes. And so how often are you testing this type of setup in the wind tunnel? So by regulation, we're allowed to do 65 runs a week. So uh, this car would have been in the wind tunnel for a whole year and we'd have done 65 runs roughly every week on it. And how long does it take to assemble a smaller car, the 60% model? So what we term as a model is actually a spine with all the electronics and the balance inside. Um, and what you can see around it is just cladding. So to actually build the spine and the balance section, that's a long period of work. That's probably a couple of months work for a team of people, but we'll only do that once for a new technology of model. The various cladding we can see here, that will be changed every run we do in the wind tunnel. As we so the outside the isn't as important as the inside of the wind tunnel? So in terms of the instrumentation and the technology, no. Um, the outside is really just getting the aerodynamic shape right, but in terms of the measurements we want, all of that is done by the capability that's inside that model. So what are we talking money-wise, Mike? How much would one of these set you back? Well, it's a really difficult question because I think um, if we were to go and buy a model from somewhere else and buy all that technology, it'd be expensive, maybe half a million pound. But actually, most of this is developed in-house. So the balances are developed in-house and all the internal kit. So the only thing we buy is the electronics. And then, of course, it's just raw materials and people's time. And then if you to look at the cost over a season, Obviously, if you count for all the panel changes we're making, then that's quite a big cost. And so how important is development in the wind tunnel? How does it translate on track? And how much more work needs to be done before the W07 car is ready? So it's very important. Um, we have other techniques for measuring aero performance. So we use computational fluid dynamics, which is a wind tunnel in the computer. And that's brilliant. That gives us loads of information. But its accuracy to the track isn't as good. And the other issue is that the car sees lots of conditions on track, lots of your angles, steer angles and roll angles, and to try and do all that in CFD would just be impossible. So the wind tunnel is vitally important to what we do. And because aerodynamics probably pays, or gives the biggest amount of lap time that we do for anything we do here, then it's, it's crucial to the car development. In terms of the W07, we're within weeks of defining the race one car. So we've already done the launch car, we're very close to the race one car now. And are you feeling excited, confident? This time of the year is always really exciting. It's exciting and it's, and it's worrying at the same time. During the season, you know where everybody else is, and that's, that's really helpful. Whether you're behind or whether you're in front, you know what your targets are. This time of the year, it's just excitement. You don't know where everybody else is. You just know where you are. So bring on Melbourne. Yes, definitely. <laughs> So some more news for you from the world of F1. Very sadly, last week, the first female driver in Formula One died, Maria Teresa de Filippis. And although there's no female driver on the grid in Formula One at the moment, former development driver for Williams, Susie Wolfe, has said she is determined to inspire more young girls to get into motorsport with her Dare to be Different initiative. So if you're under 14 and are interested in motor racing, why not visit the website and be inspired? We're going to have a new tyre in Formula One this year. Pirelli, who make the tyres for Formula One, have introduced the Ultra Soft. It's going to be purple, so it'll be difficult to miss out on track. And with this new tyre comes new regulations for 2016. So, first of all, Pirelli will bring three types of dry weather tyre compounds to each race weekend. And that's different to what we've seen previously, where they've only brought two. 
The drivers will still have access to 13 sets of tyres over the race weekend, but how those 13 sets are made up will be slightly different. Pirelli will nominate two types of tyres that have to be used during the race, and the drivers can choose which of those they use. And then a third set will be allocated for Q3 in qualifying, and that'll be the softest tyre compound available that race weekend. The remaining 10 sets, well, that will be the driver's and team's decisions. So what we'll see is each driver having different allocations potentially to their teammate. So we could see Nico with one allocation of tyres and Lewis with something totally different. And of course, this is all to spice things up in terms of strategy and also, more importantly, what I'm looking forward to, the action on track. You might have seen Lewis training in the gym or running on the beach in Mexico. And if you want to know what Nico gets up to at this time of year, well, check out this video. It's his torture chamber. So that brings us to the end of this week's studio show. If you've missed any of the content on the channel over the last few months, you can check it out here, 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 or even here. And if you've liked something in particular, why not comment below in the comment section and tell us what you'd like to see more of in 2016. And if you're new to the channel, well then subscribe because then you'll never miss any of our videos coming up over this F1 season. I'll be back soon with more studio show.